Okay. Well, obviously, this is beyond ridiculous and could have been done much the same way for much cheaper. I mean, likely 2x4s probably would have been sufficient since I've got seven more of these 18 inch long galvanized steel three quarter inch bolts to go through to lock everything together but nonetheless I really wanted something hardy that I could just put a vise on one end and that I can just fucking beat and everything and so end to end we're perfectly level but front to back we're not but I knew that was gonna be the case I'm gonna have to plane all this down or just deal with it. I mean, I'm not. I'm probably just going to deal with it honestly because if I, I'm going to redo that table, and that'll be my perfectly level surface that I just need for perfectly level delicate work. And this will be my how you doing? I just need to bang the fuck out of shit. As I'm still going to drill holes and run those, run these bolts all the way through, and you know, I'll be able to have them less like that and placed more like that. <laughs> I got that one pretty decently straight, but not so much with the other two. But, you know, those are running all the way back to the poles here, which is why I had to, uh, which is why I had to bore out, take a hole saw and bore out the first, which is hard as fuck, by the way, as you can tell, after you've already got a hole there drilled out, you need to bore out with no hole, as some of y'all may remember from my counter experience. But anyway, I got her, I got her figured out. I don't really care what she looks, you know, I'm not really worried about the aesthetics of it. Um, I mean, if I'm really worried about it, I can fill that with epoxy, which I might do. I might fill all of them with epoxy or just wood plugs. I gotta just use wood plugs. And, uh, but again, it's gonna be covered and it's pressure treated wood anyway until I do get it covered, so I'm not really worried about it degrading. Uh, but yeah, that's it. And so, pretty much all I got left now is, uh, a couple more reinforcement stringers, not so much reinforcement as places to nail the sheet metal to, or to screw the sheet metal to, and then the sheet metal. Oh, and then my two raft rims, which I've got to, which I don't know if I told y'all, I was just going over it and over it in my head, I'm like, am I going to have to cut these off and like reattach them right here with a four degree, you know, slope at the back like that, and I'm like, no dude, you can just fucking take the top and figure out a four degree pitch like across the top like that, and then that should that should uh they still the bottoms won't necessarily match up but I don't give a fuck about that that's just aesthetics but as long as the top angle matches up so the tin will be at the same angle as all the other rafters or rafter tails rather and so that the water will drain off so that's the main thing I'm concerned about so I can do that that way just take a four degree pitch off from starting here and just bringing it down the necessary amount how you doing and uh, I desperately need to get the oil and the filter and the transmission fluid changed in this so I can ride it, but I gotta do that in the shade and I may do that later today over in that part, but for now I think I quit. Gotta take a break. And uh, it's gonna do it. It's gonna do a fluids change, fluids change and a filter change here on the uh, on the old CRF 250R. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop some AT205 reseal in there on account of, uh, I think it's got a bit of a, get a bit of a leak, and so why the fuck wouldn't I? Because this stuff is amazing, and I'm going to order some more. As far as I can tell, it fixed the problem in the Jeep, and uh, I put some in the lawn, in the Husqvarna here, which incidentally I have, uh, incidentally I have springs coming for, because it stopped moving, but other than that, She's golden, so uh, leave that Lucas stop leak and all that garbage out of your life and get yourself, get yourself onto Amazon there and get yourself some AT205 Reseal, not a sponsor, just an amazing product, uh, referred by Scotty Kilmer actually, which 
you know, he's kind of hit and miss, but he did good on this one. So, uh, and like I said, I don't know if the Jeep is 100% fixed. i got to show you all some shit on that later. Pretty crazy, but she seems to be, she seems to be not leaking. She's overheating, but I don't seem to be, I don't know. we got to, i got to change the oil, see if there's milky shit in it, right? That's what i got to do. After I run it a little bit more, I change it and all that jazz and see, make sure, double check. But yeah, for the meantime, we're going to go ahead and uh, do this. Everything I filmed up at this point is probably super close. Okay, well, I'm not sure where I lost yet what the issue was, whether it was battery, because I didn't check it, I just changed it, and whether y'all got overheated, but I got everything changed out, so future reference, I'm sure some of you remember the story, and, uh, but if I save one person the trouble, then great, so, you know, never had a dirt bike before, but, uh, oil is on the left side of the bike, transmission oil is on the right side of the bike, uh, so, got the oil. I'll probably actually need to check the oil one more time and make sure it's still legit. Uh, but I did, I took it around for a quick ride after I changed everything and added some more transmission fluid and, uh, or transmission oil. And I'm going to go ahead and get, which is this stuff, this 8085 Pro Honda, which is not super cheap. But I'm going to go ahead and buy like two or three more of those because y'all remember I poured 10W40 in that bitch, right? Or 10W30 actually. And so when I went to add more, you know, and the way... It recommends to add the way I've seen people do it is you can put it in here and it takes forever so instead you take off the lid so you get uh, flow and you take off that cap there and then you can just use a little funnel and when it starts to leak out it's full you pop the cap back on test it around pop the cap back off do it again repeat the process well instead of nice clean red transmission fluid pouring out it's like all black and oily and so I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to flush it a few times so I'll buy two or three of those and I'll flush it, but I just put some of that AT205 in that too, so I'll ride it around a little bit with like that first while I'm waiting for the other shit to come. And then I'll, I'll get it on its way. Yellow? Okay. Okay, so I'll just give you a, I'll just give you all the updates. I'm not even sure what you saw earlier because the count when we were on close up. But I got my, I got my reinforcement boards here underneath supporting the weight. In addition to my my 18-inch long carriage bolts that are going through, and I'm going to put more carriage bolts through. Probably, I mean, I probably don't need to, but I'll definitely put at least two more. I'll put at least one more in the middle section. I'll probably do two or four, two, three, four. Anything more than that, probably overkill. This seems to be running correctly with AT205 reseal. I've got a crazy, I got a relay here, a cooling fan relay. The fan will not shut off, so I have to have it unplugged. And this relay right here is bad and needs to be replaced. The crazy thing is, is the relay is freaking, it's, it's discontinued. So, uh, they replace so <laughs> call around. I'm checking it. I'm pricing it online. I'm calling everybody. It's anywhere from like 31 to like 70 bucks, depending on what it comes with. And there's a couple different varieties. Well, the cheapest one I can find is like 31. And AutoZone, but AutoZone, you know, I go to AutoZone. They have the same kind for like 51, and none of them look like the one that I just showed you. This is the one that replaces it. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's about 25 times the size as the other one. And you gotta rewire it because it's obviously well fit. And it totally comes with complete, like, I mean, you gotta fucking cut out new holes, everything. Oh my God, come on. Like, I had no idea it was gonna be this involved. I knew it was, see, look, there's, there's the old one mounts with two holes in the side. New one, way bigger, which that's, a price, that's about approximate representation of the size difference, too. Fucking insane. We get to play with that. That's going to be fun. And, uh, 
pretty sure y'all know I got the starter fixed on the S10 and that that's good to go. But uh, I mean, it's still got a couple issues. It's kind of weird when it drives, but so we got the we got the Buick in the shop, the old lady's car, because I'm coming up the hill the other day and I just lose all power. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I take it in there, and two things I knew. It, I think he said throttle body sensor, and there's other piece that I knew about. But then he also he's got you got an engine mount that's bad and a torque torque bar torque torsion bar torque mount torsion bar mount torque torsion torque mount I don't know something like that. Anyway, so that's when you so when you reach you know you get on it and gas, which is probably not so much her, but probably more me. It lifts the engine up, and as a result, that's stress fractured the uh, the radiator hose on the driver's side, which is in turn has uh, cracked the radiator. So all in, we're looking at 11.50 minimum. And that's trying to get by with without taking off all the AC and recharging that, which is what the labor book calls for. So we only paid 1800 for the car, and we're about to fucking pay almost half of that, and uh, I mean more than half of that in freaking in repairs. So yay for that. But it is what it is. Cars cost money, and uh, so yeah, I get a couple more transmission fluids and flush this bitch a few times. Get a couple more extra 205s in case I need them for whatever. Borrowed this from my son, it broke, told you that, but I got the John Deere back now and it's golden. I'm pretty sure I told you that, and I think that's the end of the updates update. Oh, let's see if I can't ride and not hurt myself. One last thing, one last thing I forgot to mention. Go lay down, buddy boy. One last thing I forgot to mention. Gloves, these gloves. Heavy duty, two layer protection, venom steel, root resistant industrial gloves. They're not that expensive, especially considering how much they're charging for fucking gloves these days. 100 in a box, full nitrile, under 30 bucks. Depending on where you get them. They come in one size, one size fits most. They're a little tight on me. They're so good that you almost need to use them multiple times, like which I often do. Because you know, I got these, uh, you know, these are great. But they're not super, super strong. I've got some Harbor Freight 7 mils that are pretty decent. Those are the best gloves I've ever had, these Venom Steels. So I consider they're 30 bucks. So, okay, that's it.